Hi YouTube, John McCann back again with the HTC 10. This time it is our review, giving you our full verdict on HTC's new flagship phone. Now, a few days ago we posted a video showing you a detailed hands-on with all the nitty gritty, the specs, the stats, the details on HTC's new phone. If you wanna know more about that, check out the video over here. But this is all about what we think of the phone. We've now had it for over a week. We've had a real good play with all the features and we've got a really good feel for the phone. There will be more to come, but we're in a good position here to tell you just what we think of this handset. So kicking things off, we're gonna take a quick look at design and we love that HTC still got its full metal jacket. It feels really premium in the hand. The highly chamfered mirrored edges look really great when it catches the light, but placing it down on the table, it still comes across a bit chunky. And when you've used sort of the iPhone 6S, the LG G5, the Samsung Galaxy S7, the HTC 10 just feels a bit fat. And it's a little bit confusing. Phones have got similar sized power, screens, batteries, yet they're thinner. This is just a bit on the chunky side, so it might not be for everyone. The slightly curved chamfered edges does mean it sits relatively nicely in the hand, and there is a good equal weighting uh, of the handset allowing you to hold it quite nicely. There's a great location of the power key which is nice and rich and the volume key which is flat giving good distinction between the two. Uh, while below the screen HTC has brought in a fingerprint scanner for its uh, flagship line. We have seen HTC do this on the HTC One Max a few years ago but it was terrible. Thankfully this option is a lot better. While it may look like a button it isn't. This is just a touch sensitive pad so if you're coming from iPhone or Samsung you might try and click it. We have a few times trying to click it but it is just touch sensitive. It doubles as your home button if we just show you there quickly. Um, so that's a nice little feature and there's capacitive touch buttons either side. A little bit low down on the body for my liking to be honest. Uh, when I come to hit it I, I tend to hit maybe the space between the capacitive button and the screen. I'd like it to see a bit more centralised in that bezel but it's not a huge issue. Overall though it's another premium design from HDC but not quite as sleek as some of the competition. Then you've got the display at 5.2 inches and a QHD resolution. HTC has really kicked things up a notch over the One M9 last year, bringing it in line with some of its rivals. It looks great, it's bright, it's clear, it's crisp. It's not quite as vibrant and uh, color intense as Samsung's AMOLED displays. This is using LCD5 technology, but it is still a decent level of color saturation and you're not gonna find too much issue with it. It can look a little bit dark in games and movies, uh, but overall it's still a very nice display. So currently we're inside playing a video with the screen brightness cranked up to the max. So actually the viewing angles are quite good, but step outside and switch on auto brightness and the screen can get a bit more difficult to see. The auto brightness isn't quite as adaptive as it is on some other phones. So it can be a struggle if you're in really strong sunlight to see what's going on. Uh, but overall, it's not too much of an issue if you live in sort of rainy London. On the screen on the HTC 10, you're gonna find Android Marshmallow with HTC's clever Sense UI plastered over the top, but it, it's quite a light version of it. They pared it down once again, making it nice and clean and fresh. The app drawer remains, where some people have got rid of it this year, uh, but it's uh, vertically scrolling rather than sideways like on stock Android. The notification bar, however, and the quick settings is stock Android. HTC's done a lot of work in unison with Google to make this as close to as stock Android as possible. It's got rid of lots of duplicate apps, so the majority of applications that are pre-installed are Google applications, but HTC has still made a few of its own. It's decided that it will include its own mail app as well as Gmail, which seems a little counterintuitive. There's not a lot, there's not much to pick between the two. HTC's decided to make its own text messaging application but it has used Google's material design to keep everything looking very Android. So while it may be made by HTC, there's not a lot of difference between that and the search giants, which keeps the whole interface very nice and cohesive. If you're into your customizations, you're gonna love Freestyle Layout. We go into much more detail on that in our hands-on video, which you can watch again. There'll be a link in the corner. And it allows you to create stickers instead of app icons, make a fancier background. It's gonna probably really appeal to sort of the younger generation for that bit of customization. Yeah, it doesn't add a lot in terms of actual features of the handset, but it's a nice option to have. Uh, something we did find a little bit uh, frustrating was the ability not to change the grid layout of the home pages. Here, you're stuck with four by four. Uh, which you know reduces the number of icons you can have on a screen. Other handsets this year are allowing you to do 4x5 or 5x5 grids, allowing you to squeeze more onto each screen. So for those who are heavy app users, that's going to be a really nice feature and unfortunately one the HC10 doesn't have. In terms of performance, 
it's as slick as anything. It's got a Snapdragon 820 processor, four gig of RAM, and it just runs anything you throw at it. General navigation around the phone is nice and smooth, and it's up there with all the other top phones this year. So in terms of that, it's not going to let you down. We've had this phone now for a good week and uh, we've got a pretty good reading on the battery. We will be doing even more in-depth tests on the battery in the coming weeks. So keep an eye on our in-depth review on the website for even more findings on that. But at the moment, the battery is good, but that's as good as it gets. We found that when the screen is off and it's in idle, the HC10 does a very good job of not sucking too much power. But as soon as we powered it on, it really started to put a big drain on our resources, which is a bit of a shame. It's got a decent sized power pack, 3000 milliamps. That's the same size as the Galaxy S7. That's as pretty much as big as you're gonna get in a flagship phone this year. So it's got the power pack inside it, but it's got a chunkier body and no wireless charging, yet the same size battery as the S7. So that's a bit confusing. Um, you'd think that uh, HTC might be able to have squeezed a little bit more in there. It hasn't. It's a bit of a shame. The battery life isn't as good for it, maybe. Um, so it is disappointing. If you're a sort of a lighter to moderate user, you will get a day out of this handset. But as you see, I've claimed up to two days battery life and I really can't see that happening. Uh, you're gonna have to be charging this one nightly. A feature HC has included on the 10 is the Boost Plus app, allowing you to take control of various aspects of the device. Uh, Smart Boost allows you to clear up any unnecessary files, allowing you to get a bit more storage. I did find that it took an age though to go through all the files on the phone. Considering how much performance and power it's got packed inside and the slick operation, it was a bit of a disappointment, sort of a, a juxtaposition of uh, performance there, but it's not a huge issue and it will allow you to regain maybe a small amount of data, but don't expect gigabytes to suddenly be freed up. Game Battery Booster takes the resolution of games down from QHD to Full HD. There's not a huge difference in uh, visuals, but if, you know, if you're a really hardcore gamer, you want to keep that top level. But if you're a little bit more concerned about battery, turn on the battery booster. You can uh, select which games have it and which games don't if you don't want it to kill all your graphics on all your games, um, but it's a nice option to have. And there's lock apps allowing you to lock certain apps. So if you're going to give your phone to someone that you didn't particularly trust, you can stop them from sending dodgy messages to friends or taking particular selfies with their camera. The whole Boost Plus app in general is, is a nice addition. It's a move in the right direction and it's stuff that we're seeing other companies do as well. Samsung with its Game Center, uh, LG are doing similar things as well. So all the, all the manufacturers are trying to improve your battery life, keep your phone running smooth, keeping the storage clear. Um, so it is a useful feature to have. So taking a look at the camera on the HTC 10, one of the big features for this handset and after HTC panicked with the HTC One M9 and slapping a 20 megapixel on the rear, it's refined things on the 10, it's gone back to its ultra pixel roots and you find a 12 megapixel snapper on the rear of the HTC 10. It's also joined by a dual LED flash and a laser autofocus for what HTC says is some of the fastest focusing in the market. So how does it stack up? Now, it's not a bad camera by any stretch of the imagination, but it's also not the best out there in terms of general snapping. Firing up the camera app, and she said this should be one of the fastest, if not the fastest camera app to load on the market, and it's just not. Maybe the software still needs to be optimized a bit, but there's a good sort of second, second and a half delay, and HC was promising sub one second, so there's something not going on quite right there. Using the auto mode, the HTC can take some decent shots, but they're not quite as poppy, they're not quite as detailed as the S7, which we think is the best camera currently on the market just for taking photos. The auto mode on the Samsung is incredible. It's not quite as impressive on the HTC. You can, however, fine tune your pictures. There is a pro mode allowing you to really get down and dirty, really fine tune every aspect from white balance to shutter speed to ISO to contrast. There's, it also captures in raw mode that means a lot more detail in your shots. And after taking the shot, you can go down and you can post process and you can tweak even more, enhancing the images again. Now that's all great, but that takes an awful lot of time if you're gonna do it each photo. And that's the sort of work you need to do if you want to get really good shots. Whereas on some rival handsets, all you need to do is press the shutter button on auto mode and get pretty much a similar sort of quality shot. So. It, there is a very good camera hiding in here somewhere. You just need to do quite a lot of work to find it. And, and that's a bit frustrating for the everyday user who just wants to be able to pick up the phone, use auto mode and just snap a picture. 
HTC's now famous Zoe feature is still on the HTC 10 as well, which captures three seconds of video with every shot you take, which brings your photos back to life. It's like the original live photo if you're an iPhone fan, uh, but you can make some really nice montages if you go out for a day and shoot purely in Zoe camera. You can mix up the stills with the moving images and you can make some really nice show reels. And the last big feature we're gonna focus on in this review of the HTC 10 is audio, something that's HTC has worked on for years and has been really rather good at. Boom Sound returns, it's Boom Sound Hi-Fi Edition in the HTC 10, but as you may have already seen, there's no dual front-facing speakers anymore. There's just the one up by the earpiece. Now, there's good reason for this, says HTC. Up top, it's given us a tweeter on the front. Tweeter speakers in general require direction and you want it directing into your face and your ear so you can hear what's going on. On the base, the second speaker resides, not on the front anymore, it's on the bottom. This is now a bass speaker, a subwoofer. And as you said, this doesn't matter because bass isn't directional, it will resonate anywhere. So it doesn't matter how you hold it, you'll still get a good audio quality. Unfortunately, we've not really found that. Cranking the volume up high, listening to Spotify, it sounds good, but we actually prefer the M9 and the M8. They're front facing speakers, the dual boom sound spacing right at you. We enjoyed that a lot more. This, it just doesn't sound quite as good through the internal speakers. However, all is not lost. This phone is packed with amps. There's one on each speaker. There's also a heavy duty one on the headphone port. This can upscale your music to 24 bit. That's a better audio quality. That includes songs from Spotify. So plug in a pair of headphones and you're gonna get a really nice audio experience. Another bonus with the HTC 10 is HTC bundling in a set of high-res headphones into the box. Now, I've got a pair here. They are relatively heavy duty. You've got to really sort of pop them into your ears nicely. Um, you'll know when they're in properly. And once they are, they're, they're a sturdy fit. And you can genuinely hear the difference. Now, I'm not a massive audiophile. I'm no expert in these sort of things, but the bass sounds really nice. Does It is a little bit bass heavy, but you don't lose frequency, you don't lose the high tones. It is a very nice all-round experience. High-res headphones can be quite expensive, so considering HTC has got these in the box with the phone at no extra cost, that's a really nice addition. You don't have to use those headphones though. The amp on the headphone jack will up, still upscale all your songs, so they'll still sound great via whatever sort of headphones you're using. And then quickly, there is a new cover after the dot view on the M9. HTC gives us with the HTC 10, ice cover. It's a shame, it's such a nicely designed phone and this completely hides it. It's obviously all rubber and plastic. Uh, it protects it, but you don't get the same styling. So there is a decision to be made there by you. Um, but the ice cover, if you give it a double tap, shows you the clock. Another nice feature on the cover is you don't even need to open it if you want to take a picture. You can just drag down a couple of times on it and launch your camera right through it. Uh, the ice view cover does give you your own sort of Instagram style filter through here, but don't worry, that filter won't transcend into your actual photos, but you can snap photos uh, without having to open it, which is great for a quick snap, although it is a little clunky. The screen isn't quite as responsive uh, and it is difficult to see, especially if you're outside what's actually in your viewfinder. So the HTC 10, a phone that promises a lot, but only really partly delivers. You can't criticize it in any major way. It does improve in all the right areas. The battery is bigger, it is slightly better. The software has been improved. It is cleaner, it's fresher. There's a bit of customization, which is nice. The design is still premium. It looks and feels great. The camera is a slight improvement and the audio quality is excellent, but it feels like it's just lacking a big standout feature. The HTC One sort of redefined the design language for HTC. The One I Mate built on it in a number of ways, an even better design, an innovative dual camera setup. The M9 sort of lost its way again, and the HTC 10 is where HTC is trying to get back on the wagon. And while it has made some strong strides towards getting back on track, it's not quite fully realized in this handset. We're still reviewing this handset, so th there's gonna be more to come on the camera, on the battery. We're hoping that maybe both get a little bit of a tweak with a software update. Again, the camera app is a little bit clunky. You can take some really nice photos with it, but it's a bit of an effort to do. It's not quite as intuitive as other handsets, so that would be nice. The boom sound speakers, which are built in, they're a bit of a disappointment. There's not probably not much you can do too much because the hardware is already built in. 
but overall you've still got a very nice solid premium phone let us know what you think in the comments below thank you for watching don't forget to like and subscribe we will be back with more htc info more tests uh so stay tuned and thank you very much for watching